gone quite mad if I sing you a little ditty. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. And if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'll be nine green bottles hanging on the wall. that you won't go the whole hog of Christmas dinner. You'll do a Delia cheat. Or you won't make the Christmas pudding in the usual way. You'll cut a few ingredients out and serve it as Christmas pudding. Will you make a sauce, buy the ingredients from the shop, and put it in the saucepan with a bit of wine and a bit of water and perhaps a little cream. Will your guests not realise that you haven't done it properly? That you've made some shortcuts and it doesn't taste quite right? Some years ago, I hope I won't be sued for saying this, but some years ago, the Church of England sacked their stockbrokers, who were doing a fine job, and went to other stockbrokers who said, we can make you rich quick. Wrong. The Church of England lost a whole lot of money through people doing risks, and they went wrong. Oh dear. Hundreds of millions lost. Pity about that. As it happens, the market's changed and things picked up, and I think they're kind of back to normal. Although, as you know, investments are not good things to have because you don't get a very good return unless you've got an outstanding stockbroker. Better in bricks and mortar. Telling you all this. Why am I telling you this? Well, because the church from my youth is changing. And the church from my ordination is changing. In my early working life as a deacon and a priest, it was not uncommon for incumbents to have two or three curates. I wish. I've had a few curates, but not several at once. Why? Well, we don't have the philanthropists around like the Victorians. The Victorians were extraordinary. They endowed churches up and down the land with trusts and all sorts of wonderful, advantageous plans. Unfortunately, they've all been spent up, and we don't have them anymore. Don't get me wrong, I know one or two philanthropists of nowadays who are extremely generous and helpful, and who have helped the church in a funny way, but it has actually propped it up. So why isn't there a public announcement in all the Anglican churches saying, we've got a problem, we haven't got any money, our investments are down because the interest rates aren't good for investments, very good if you want to borrow money, you would have to pay a fortune now, but if you have money, the return is poor. So why don't they just tell us it's desperate. We don't know what to do. We're in a terrible state. Rather than have little schemes that take the focus off what really is the problem and passes 
passes on to other things to get our teeth into. So when I came into this church in Wales and was doing a, an interregnum job with Canon Peter, I thought to myself, this system won't work. And if one church goes down, it'll bring all the others down gradually too. Because if one church closes, they don't actually say, oh, well, the rest of the churches don't have to worry about that. They make the rest of the churches pay for what that church actually had to pay. And so it's divvied around in between all the other churches. There comes a time when you can't pay your own way, let alone everybody else's. And we are at that critical situation now where one more church closing could bring the whole lot down. And I can say, sing, all fall down. What do I need? Well, the church council wanted me to tell you this. I do not know the future because my name is not Mystic Meg. But I do know my future. And the fact of the matter is, the mission area of Rinalore have been told, not asked or negotiated with, have been told that we only can afford 2.7 clergy for the mission area. Well, I want to see a 0.7 clergy, and it might look rather strange. The diocese have said that they will prop us up by giving us a 0.3 of a clergy themselves. But that still means three clergy looking after about ten churches. Bearing in mind, I'm part-time. I am part-time, well paid at part-time, and I gave them back their house their house per year costs more than I'm paid. So they are net receivers, but I'm down as 0.5, and when I pointed out to the diocesan secretary that I thought it was a bit dodgy, because I've given you lots of money back and I don't claim any expenses, then that sum doesn't work. In the future, the curate of Britain Law will be leaving, and will go and work out within the next year his own church. So that leaves three. I'm leaving. That leaves two, looking after ten churches. And um, you're not going to be replaced. I did say, well, we've got two, two and a half years to find somebody, a nice young person. Mummy, Daddy, and 2.4 children to replace me. Lovely, isn't it? Nothing's been done, has it? Meanwhile, rather unexpectedly, the vicar of Melbourne has left. Even I am helping with that while I'm still here. Because I'm part-time. And so the show goes on. So I am being paid the 31st of October because quote the church in Wales does not have to pay you after the age of 70 because I can't bear the thought of you being without a priest for remembrance time Advent and Christmas I'm doing it voluntarily after that God alone knows. But we're British. We shall never surrender. We do not throw in the towel. We ask questions. And one of the criticisms that I've had about mission areas has been we get all the responsibility 
but no authority. Having been a part-time archdeacon, long-term area dean, parish priest and the like, I am used to negotiating. I've always had a freehold. I can do what I like. I do not like being pushed around and I've made it very clear. The church, if it's in trouble, needs help. The church, if it's in, tr in trouble, needs negotiation. A compromise, a deal. Not to be told, well, you'll have to do that. There is a limit to how many clergy can do how much. And I know about limits, because I wouldn't have had a heart attack if I hadn't had to work so hard in my last job. And so, I have written to the bishop, thanking him for the opportunity of doing this work. It's rather fun being retired and making a comeback, a bit like a faded actor or actress. But I'm not very happy about the future. And I've said that I worry, but I suppose we must leave that to God. But God helps him who helps himself. And I'm a great believer in that. You don't think it's your right to do things. You don't think that you should have to do this, that and the other just because you're nice. We roll our sleeves up and we get on with it. So we've got to have a plan. I'm not going to be a revolutionary. Well, not much of one. And I'm not going to scupper the system. Well, I'm not going to allow the largest congregation in the Brynamore mission area to be just left, left, to do what they want or what they like. No parish priest. Well, two can play at that game. No chair. Why should you pay a share if nobody's going to come and help you, or lead you, or pastor you? Or you're told you might get somebody to do a Eucharist twice a month? Well, you can imagine when I was told that my blood boiled. I don't think so. I'm used to them daily, let alone weekly. So I was fuming. I said, I don't think you understand traditional church. Certainly in the Anglican Church, by law, in every parish, you are supposed to have a celebration of the Holy Communion, as they call it. Well, we want it. We need it. We need sustaining. And you must have it. But it's no good a and other coming in to do a service on a Sunday at whatever time if it isn't followed up by pastoral care. If you don't get those telephone calls saying, where are you, you've probably missed them. But the fact of the matter is, the show must go on. When I'm gone, you'll think, won't leave my mind because I think about you all the time every day and I worry about you even probably when I don't need to worry about you because we love one another because we are part of Christ's family and whatever whoever kicks one of our family they kick all of us. And whoever kicks this ancient church might get a punch back, even if it's metaphorical. Remember, in three years' time, we celebrate our 1500th anniversary. 
So what I say to you is, bring them all into church. Let's pile them all in. There's no one in those pews. Otherwise, there's somebody in every pew. We must fill the church. We must fight for survival. We must win the fight for Christendom. We can't lay down because people can't help us. We must rely on God for self-sufficiency, self for strength in body, in mind and spirit. So between now and the new year, we'll pack them all in. Then we're a force to be reckoned with. I don't want to go. I don't want to leave you. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go to church? I don't know. It's a long drive to go to England every day, but never mind. I'm sure the Lord will provide me with a marvellous helicopter. The fact of the matter is, I care about you. And although I shed a tear at the time for Cum and Trelawney, I shall be wailing buckets if anything happens to St Bridget. I hope we can be united and make sure another green bottle doesn't fall off the wall. We don't need it. It doesn't please me, and I'm sure it doesn't please God. We must find an alternative plan, a way of continuing the tradition of the church. I don't want this tradition to change here. We stand for traditional worship, and that should continue. I don't want all the churches to offer the same worship, so everybody's interchangeable all the time, and so we get the lowest common denominator. We don't want that. We want a church of excellence. Where else can you get sermons like this? Where else can you get an organist who is also a fantastic flower arranger? Where else can you find church wardens like ours? Where else can you find a treasurer like Anne, a secretary like Amy, and a PCC like we've got? We are blessed. We are fortunate. We are the people of God in misery. We love God. God loves us. We love one another. And let's keep it that way. So, it's up to you, brothers and sisters. You're brilliant the way you turn up, week by week and day by day. You don't know how much I appreciate is, I don't want St. Bridget picked off like another casualty. And may I tell you this, if St. Bridget goes, it'll probably bring the rest of the mission area down too. Because we provide quite a substantial amount of the parish share. Hmm. What are they getting? they listen to us, we may have the solution. If they negotiate with us, we may have a plan. I don't do, do that. I don't like that. I'm angry about that. I like, let's work on it together. Jesus would have found it very difficult without his disciples. Who did he send on ahead? 
Who did he prepare the way for the Lord? Who was it that was the forerunner, John the Baptist? What did they do? When Jesus went up into heaven, did they say, well, that's it then? No. He left them the Holy Spirit. They went back to Jerusalem rejoicing and praising God. I hope you've got apostolic succession in you. That you will not lie down and be trampled on. The future is yours. The future is St. Bridget's. The future is the traditional church, not gimmicky churches. I've said enough. I understand about the dishonest steward doing spitty deals and propping it up for a bit and saving his own bacon. I'm not a man of spitty deals. I don't like shortcuts. I want the church run as the church has always been run, through faith and hope and love. If they give us the course, faith, hope and love, let them 